In this presentation, we commence a series of studies of the promise of the kingdom in Daniel. When God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, he intended to set up his people as special. But this meant that the people had to live in a worthy manner to demonstrate the holy God they represented. Therefore, God would bless those who reflected his holiness. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, Moses says to the people, and it shall come to pass, if thou hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all his curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. When King Solomon dedicated the temple, it was after 480 years of back and forth rebellion and repentance. So he acknowledged the Israelites might sin against God and requested that once they returned in repentance, that God would accept their prayer. From verse 13. For Solomon had made a busy scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high and had set it in the midst of the court and upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands towards heaven. Have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken to the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee, that thine eyes may be open upon this house day and night, upon the place where thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which I see when prayed toward this place. Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which they shall make towards this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven. And when thou hearest, forgive. If a man sin against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou from heaven and do, and judge thy servants, by requiting the wicked, by recompensing his way upon his own head, and by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. Solomon prayed that no matter the manner of deviation from God, once the people repented, God would hear and deliver them. Verse 24. And if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return and confess thy name, and pray and make supplication before thee in this house, then hear thou from heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee, yet if they pray towards this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them, then hear thou from heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, when thou hast taught them the good way, when they should walk and send rain upon thy land, which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. And God responded that once the people did so, he would. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12 to 14. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. In Daniel 1, we read of the southern kingdom of Judah being attacked by the king of Babylon and children of nobility being taken captive. This was centuries after King Solomon had dedicated the temple. From verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiah, King, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiah, king, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, unto the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, 
that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had the ability in the understanding the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. This account is also found in Second Chronicles. In chapter 36, we see that the king of Babylon came three times against Judah and its capital city, Jerusalem. The attack in Daniel chapter one was just the first time from verse five. Jehoiakim was 20 and five years old when he began to reign and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried up the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Verse 9. Jehoiachin was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord and made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem. Verse 11. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign and reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet speaking from the mouth of the Lord. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. The next verses tell us that it was not just the kings of Judah who were evil, but also the priests and the people who followed their leaders. From verse 14, moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, who slew their young men with a sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion upon young man or maiden, old man or him that stood for age. He gave them all into his hand, and all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. And they burned the house of God and draped down the wall of Jerusalem and burned all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the king of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. This history tells us that there are some things that God is very serious about, to the extent that he would allow the temple dedicated to him to be destroyed by a heathen kingdom worshiping false gods. Daniel 1 tells us some of the Hebrews who were taken captive. From verse 6. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, unto Hananiah of Shadrach, unto Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who had appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort. Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. 
So we notice that at least some of the Hebrews were faithful to God and would not even allow themselves to be defiled by food. Nowadays, people make a big noise about the name that they are called. But we notice that the Hebrews did not concern themselves with the names dedicated to pagan gods that they were called. They made sure that their bodies, which were the temples of God, were not defiled. Because of the faithfulness of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, God was faithful to them and demonstrated his power by blessing their health and strength. From verse 11. Then said Daniel to Melzah, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their countenances appeared clearer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzah took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. The Hebrew boys requested a vegan diet and water, no fermented drinks, no special exotic foods, no meat of any kind. Instead of having to worry about whether the animals they were brought were clean or unclean, or whether they were killed in keeping with Hebrew dietary law and prepared without the blood, they ate vegan food and drank water. What do you think was the result? Psalm 119 from verse 97 tells us that those who keep God's laws can be blessed with superior intellect and insight. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou to thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. From verse 17. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. When tested, the four faithful Hebrews were found to be more skillful and knowledgeable than all the existing wise men in the kingdom. Daniel and his companions would not have participated in the demonic magic rituals, but they would have demonstrated better knowledge of mathematics, science, astronomy, cuneiform writing, Babylon and Aramaic languages, etc. Astronomers were able to predict lunar and solar eclipses by computation, for example. So they were numbered among the wise men of the kingdom. The first chapter starts with the attack upon Jerusalem and the debasement of its people and the captivity of children of nobility but ends with the exaltation of the faithful children. Let us end this presentation with a promise that we will soon realize is central to the theme of the book of Daniel. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I pray that we all choose to be faithful to the Lord God Almighty. Amen.